So in the last video, we went through a procedure to find the antiderivatives of a few different polynomial terms. And now what we'd like to do is generalize that. So suppose we have the function, the general polynomial function, f of x equals x to the n. And what we would like to do is find the antiderivative of this. Well, of course, we expect that the antiderivative will be the next higher power of x. So it will be some constant times x to the n plus 1. So let's try this. We take a derivative of that. What we get is constant times x plus 1 times x to the n. And so if we want this to equal, if we want this whole thing to equal x to the n, we need this whole factor out in front to equal 1. We need k times 1 plus n to equal 1, or in other words, k equals 1 over n plus 1. And this means that the general antiderivative of x to the n would be 1 over n plus 1 times x to the n plus 1, and of course, plus c. So this is the general antiderivative of x to the n. And right now, we could actually state a few other general antiderivatives, just state these rules. So for example, if this is f of x and this is capital F of x, well, of course, if it's just e to the x, we get e to the x is the antiderivative. This is cosine x, we get sine x. If it is sine x, we get an antiderivative of negative cosine x. If it is secant squared x, what we get is an antiderivative of tangent x. If we get secant x tangent x, the antiderivative of that, of course, is just the secant function. If we get this strange expression of 1 over the square root of 1 minus x squared, well, we may remember that is the derivative of the sine inverse function. Similarly, if we get 1 over 1 plus x squared, that is the derivative of the tan inverse function. So these are just some examples. And of course, all of these should have the plus c because the general antiderivative always has an arbitrary constant attached to it. So these are just some overall antiderivative rules.